Hello, viewers. Welcome to Jaipur Dialogue USA. And as I always request, please like, subscribe, support our channel, contribute, give your feedback. It enables us to become better. We learn from you, our feedback. We, some of them we like, some of them we don't like. But hey, listening to you is a real pleasure. And please keep coming back to us. Uh, today, I have, a, I have a very special theme for which I have a very special person joining me today. Dr. Raj Kumar, Dr. J.S. Raj Kumar from Chennai. Uh, Dr. Raj Kumar has become a friend now. I can yeah. say that with confidence because we connect on values and that's what is important. So today we, um, he has written a book and we were conversing about it, Thirukul's Wisdom. And when I was doing my research on Thirukul's Wisdom, you know, we know so little, we North Indians know so little about Tamil Nadu. <laughs> But I did a little bit of research and I found it's all about Sanatan values. It's all about values, whether it is in virtue, you know, wealth, living a life, calm, vasana, love and desire. And Thirukul's wisdom is eternal. Then the second thought came to my mind. Is that the reason why Mr. Stalin of Chennai wants Sanatan dead? So today we are going to talk to Dr. Jay Kumar, Raj, uh, Dr. Raj Kumar, about that, Thirukul's wisdom and its relevance <clears throat> and what is happening in Tamil politics particularly. So Dr. Raj Kumar, such a delight to have you here. And as I was commenting on you, he's always ready. I mean, if you look at his activities of the day, from helping the poor, helping the destitute, doing his research in laser technology in medicine, He's doing podcasts, two minute, one minute podcasts, and I love it because he's, he's reaching the message to the people. What you do with it is your karma, but he's doing his bit to reach out to all of us here. Welcome to the show, Raj Kumar ji. And uh, tell me, you, Babu, ji. what inspired you to go back into the political <laughs> wisdom? Tell us about that. Let people know. I mean, Tamilians know about it, probably. As a classic Indian, we know everything but maybe not everything. <laughs> so go ahead, make my day. <laughs> First of all, I'm very happy to be here on the show. It's a show with which I resonate in terms of frequency, in terms of values, and simply in terms of, of direction. So I also want to start by thanking you, Vipuriji, hundreds, hopefully thousands of Tamil people who watch the show, and they should, because you're so focused on Tamil Nadu politics as well, should thank you because I can't think of a better bridge between South and North Indian cultures. There is, there is a very clear elephant in the room when you go to say Delhi or Hyderabad or Amritsar for a conference, there's a distinct chasm which divides the Tamil speaking people on one side and well, the rest of the world really on the other because Hyderabadis will speak brilliant Telugu as well as Hindi. Cochinwalas will speak Malayalam as well as Hindi and so on and so forth. The Ambari will speak perfect Gujarati and Hindi. But no, not the Tamarian will refuse to speak in Hindi often refused to speak in English and is so fond of his language, which is a wonderful language, but there's no reason to hate the rest of the world and will only cluster into one small group. So this is what Modi ji went about doing when he wanted to capture the hearts of the Tamil people. Very cleverly, he did what no other congressman or BJP or any other central party did. He attacked the very heart of Tamil culture and that is the Thir Kural. So the Thiru Kural means, literally means very special words. That's all it means. Kas Shabd, if you like, in Hindi. And the beauty of this, it's amazing. I mean, it's 2000 years old and every one of them is only seven words long. Kalas. That's why my new book that I'm launching on the 28th is called Seven word mantras because in these it's amazing how in seven words 
as you rightly said, the Quran is broadly divided into three parts. One is on Aram, which is best, the best, you know, verbal equivalent to Aram is Dharma. It's about friendship, looking after your parents or parents looking after their children, uh, you know. is the first one third of the Quran. The second is terrific. It's all about management. I have not read a better compilation of management axioms than the Tirukur. It's so good. And the third part is about love, desire, men, women, about calm, you know. So it's, he deals with dharma, he deals with karma, and the second part he deals with artha. So it is in a way the dharma, artha, karma, and then finally going on to moksha. It is the same, same eternal values, which we call by the much bandied word, but a word that I insist on using, the sanatan word, the word which is very special and at the heart of Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, Indeed, all the Indian subcontinental religions, if not jibing with the Abrahamic religions, non-Abrahamic religions are all Sanatana Dharma. We all believe in reincarnation. We all believe in karma. We believe in a definite dharmic way of life. It's no single heaven or hell. It's the same. So the Tirukkural was written by a man who was most likely to have been the offspring of a fisherwoman and a Jain trader. Lived in the heart of Chennai in a place called Mailapur. Yes, there are various controversies. And he, until the 1950s and 60s, until the, the Dravada movement came in, in all, in all Tirukkural statues and pictures, he wore saffron. And as soon as the Dravidian parties came in, that saffron was whitewashed into white. In all the old pictures, right until the 1952 pictures of the chief minister of Tamil Nadu with Thiruvalluvar's statue, he had a sacred thread. Somehow, that sacred thread, Koya just got lost. So they changed the color, they changed the thread, and then he also had the, the sacred ash on his forehead until the 50s and 60s. Slowly the ash also was removed. Now this is very typical of many regional parties where they make a narrative happen very subtly. So can you imagine a man with a sacred thread, ash and saffron, is now wearing white, no, no ash, no sacred thread, and they reinterpret many of his uh, couplets to sync them up in the Dravidian kind of way. Very sad, but very true. So what Modi ji did was over the last seven years, he is launched into utilizing the couplets of Thiruvalluvar at various situations. And my book is a compilation of the 10 couplets that Modi ji deployed at various functions. For example, he went to France and to win the hearts of the Tamil people and also because he loves Tamil, he has now created a department to only further Tirukkural across the world and he is planning to release the Kural. It's already there in I think 80 or 100 languages. He wants to release it in all the possible languages and he wants a big statue of Tiruvalluvar across the world. Wow. So what a guy. I mean this is a man who then went and meditated on the Vivekananda rock looking at a huge statue of the very same Tiruvalluvar at the southern tip of our Bharat Mahan. 
So this man is not doing this to curry favor and win some two or three percent more of votes as it is widely flouted by his enemies in the south. He is doing it because of a deep regard for the depth of the Tirukkural. So I'll quickly give you one or two examples. He was in Paris. He was uh, he was awarded the Order of De Gaulle, which is one of the highest yeah. orders. It's like the <coughs> Bharat Ratna. First Indian to get it. He gets it and then fondly remembers his mother and says a seven-word mantra from the Tirukkural. Where he says, In repoludil, periduvakkum, tan maganai, sandro nanaketatai. Seven words in which it says, more than the joy of knowing that she has given birth to a male child, a mother will be truly proud and pleased when she hears that her son has become the elder of a village. Not the richest man, not the king, but the go-to man for advice, the elder, the son Ron is best <clears throat> translated in English a word called alderman, you know, the from which the word elder came. A man who would be consulted when there was a crisis. So she, he's what, what basically what he was saying was, your mother will truly be proud of you if everybody is helped by you. If the village comes to you for a crisis, more so than the moment she gave birth to a male child in an admittedly, I must admit, in an admittedly male dominant, male dominated society in which a woman was often cast aside for having given birth to three or four girls. So when a woman gave birth to a boy, she would get oh my gosh, a sense of relief and happiness. My boy has saved me from ostracism. My boy has saved me from being pushed out as a social outcast. He's going to make me proud. But prouder than that, when he really makes her proud, not as the richest man, not as the most powerful man, but as the most respected man for his sense of balance. Right. And this we are talking about in the second century. And, and Modiji and used this. And doctor, this is universal. This particular thing about women giving birth to a male child, my son, was a matter of pride until science busted the entire myth that you and I, as stupid men, are responsible for the gender determination of a child. Here I'm saying stupid not to say you or I are stupid, but that is the conception that some people still believe in that. Some people still believe Earth is flat. We can't do anything about that. But <laughs> what is important is that what you said about the universal truth part of it is that how mother would be pleased and how prime minister used it in Paris for the award. So tell us about more of those, you know, and I'm going to definitely get your book and read all those 10 that he used, but I want you to share which are the other ones that you said just now. Right. <clears throat> so another one which I really like was, this is Modiji shivering in Ladakh before our armed forces. All right. And to this absolutely cosmopolitan metro mix of warriors he's you know huddled up against the cold and he's telling them i know what makes you tick two thousand years ago a saint poet called tiruvalluvar wrote in the tirukkural he's telling them about the four things that make an army strong one is maram sense of being a warrior manam a sense of self-esteem or you know to be uh, proud of yourself maram manam mandavadi chalavu to follow in the paths of the great warriors before you and fourth tetram tetram means you have suraksha from the sarkar that is tetram and he was talking about this when he released new gloves and rucksacks and backpacks for these guys. I would like to remind the viewers that we nearly got kicked in Kargil. And I'm sorry to say this because our boys were fighting. I've talked to Jawan Zubin there. 
fighting with gloves that had holes in them and you're fighting at minus 18, minus 16. Ridiculous. Socks with holes in them. The water would go in. Rifles that were getting jammed because of the cold. He went there and got them new sets of carbines, new rucksacks, you know, new chocolates and stuff, high energy chocolates. And then he was saying, and of these four things, the fourth is called Tetram. This is, it is a soldier, Jawan ka haq hai, or sarkar ka farz hai. It's the duty of the sarkar to provide that to the Jawan. So Jawan's right to have that protection from the people. And Valdivar says these four are true protection to a warrior in the army. And he was talking to the warriors in the army. And he was giving them that protection, which they did not get in the Kargil war. And they, they revamped the guns. I talked to the people, they're repeating guns, the guns that didn't get stuck, and good gloves, and you know, good quality socks, good quality clothes. He was giving them and said, and he said, 2000 years ago in Tamil Nadu, southern tip, a man said these four things should be given. And that fourth thing is the responsibility for Mary Zimidari. And this is a Sarkar doing it for you. What a way to connect with the people who are standing out there in the cold and fighting that, that people like me are able to live in peace and harmony in India. And somewhere along the line, Bhaputiji, in this mad rush towards parochialism or regionalism, what gets forgotten is a larger Bharat Mata, a larger sense of borders, a larger sense of our Jawans fighting out there on the border for us, standing in guard. And this gentleman, using this seven word mantra, brought back the attention of the entire Indian polity to the Jawan. Brilliant. I mean, I know obviously somebody else is writing it for him, but the choice of people, the people who are choosing the Tirukurals, they couldn't be better chosen in that situation. From whatever little I know, you know, these uh, the, the, all these leaders have their speech writers, no doubt. But a person like Modi ji would, even if he, he would, he would ask his speech writers to in include his thoughts and he would instruct the speech writer i want a suitable quote from thiru's thiru thiru, thiru, thiru uh, quotation thiru thiru yeah. uh, quotations this is what is important about the leadership part of it i mean i'm i'm sorry to say this but joe biden will read whatever the speech writer has written there is no thought of his in it you know i say this with due respect so to say <laughs> But a Bill Clinton or an Obama will ask the speechwriter to include his thoughts, what he wants to say. So coming back to the other aspect, you know, this is this is you know contemporary politics we live in. You know, as we say in our work, you know, somebody asked me, and this is something which I want to share with you and the audience. Some American asked me, you guys talk about dharma a lot. What is dharma? And that is one critical question that many of us are not able to answer. And I had to think what to say. So I said to him, the very simple meaning of dharma is that it's not a religion. It calls upon you and I who intuitively, instinctively, and intelligently know when we are doing the right thing and when we are doing the wrong thing. We know that. Whether thinking of a pop in our head or wanting to kill somebody, <laughs> that itself is adharmic. Because that becomes part of your pravritti. So what I want to say is, is, is that part that we have to begin to live the universal truth. Living the universal truth is key. And I want to hear, you have said, so far said two of his mantras. Tell us the third one. <laughs> So there's another beautiful one that yeah. talks about exactly. So the equivalent to dharma is aram. Okay. So aram, it's a very different, it's got different connotations, but its closest match is dharma. So somebody asks Tirukural, uh, Tiruvalluvar, tell me what is dharma? What is aram? So he says, I won't tell you what it is. I will tell you the absence of the four things 
that will constitute dharma or aram and he says arukkar ava veguli innachol ivai nangum irukkad endra aram arukkar paise jalte hai jalan taraste they feel you know jealousy, jealousy. about somebody yeah jealousy and arukkar is a beautiful oh. word arukkar literally means dirty river it means that in the whiteness of your soul a dirty river runs in aruk means dirty aru means river it's very very graphic one of the oldest the oldest language arukkar ava is is nothing but um greed too much of greed you know what they call lob yes lob yeah and then lust lust uh, lust is come the third come. what is yeah. arukkar ava so basically what he talks about is avoiding lob avoiding moh avoiding kaam avoiding krodh and, and avoiding ahankar finished if you avoid these five what you're left with behind is dharmic so arukkar is jealousy ava is desire as the buddha said he did all his meditation and found finally the root of all evil is just desire maybe desire for money desire for flesh desire for fame whatever so arukkar ava which is desire Beguli is uncontrolled anger, and inna chol is unnecessary usage of harsh words demeaning others. It's a very originally Tamil character to say nothing if you need to say bad about something. They say if you want to talk about somebody, say good things. Otherwise, just keep quiet. I must tell you, Vibhuti ji, that has completely changed in the political climate of the last fifty, sixty years. This. is not the pure tamil culture tirukural is the pure tamil culture so he says absence of arukkar ava veguli innachol if you take these off what you are left with is dharma or aram and all these in just seven words exactly the same as saying you know hatao kaam krodh moh lob aur ahankar hatao dil se aur jo baki hai wo ye dharma bus this is what he says but in seven words so it's basically a manual on life it's a manual on life and i can't figure out what i want to tell the non tamil audience is that not only are these seven words but these seven words are grammatically highly conventionalized because tamil grammar is like is like panini on steroids or panini on drugs it's so complex that <laughs> words are classified into various families and you have one type of poem called the venpa very very with the meter one particular type of word should follow another these 1331 words giving you eternal wisdom one 1331 couplets giving you eternal wisdom are all venpas so if you go grammatically you'll find this particular gerund should be followed by no should be followed by a verb they're all like that i don't know how the guy did it man it's almost divine yet let me tell you another one that modi likes very much he whenever he talks to management people he brings this out he has a reference to this and he was talking in at the srm university in chennai and he was telling the people do you know about delegation and some of the boys said yeah we know he said if you want to learn delegation read tirukural and everybody was just staring and then he said idanai idanal ivan mudikkum endraind adanai avan kan vidar which simply means agar ek kaam hai jis aadmi us kaam ko successfully kamyab se karega kaun sa instruments istemal karke wo karega कौन सा रास्ता चुना के चुना के करेगा उसी आदमी के पास उस काम को दे दो बेसिकली डेलीगेशन चूज द राइट मैन फॉर अ जॉब हु विल यूज द करेक्ट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द जॉब एंड द करेक्ट पाथवे यू वांट टू हैव अ जॉब डन इन बिजनेस यू माइट चूज अ पर्सन हु नोस द सीईओ ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर कंपनी to give us that order or who knows the government officials to take it through and he mentioned so this job to be done 
by this man using this device chosen and give unto him the job on delegation and modi ji obviously is a fabulous delegator because you he is given external affairs i mean modi ji can't be expected to know everything about everything so external affairs he is given to jay shankar ji who has been in the foreign service for so long who spent so much time in china who knows the china india infringement issues and the pakistan india contention issues okay. perfect person he chooses nirmala sitaraman who has been with price water house cooper deloitte she knows the run running of finance how the financial machine ticks and can therefore be chosen to represent it and also to represent the people to the ministry you can't think of a better person or rajnath singh ji you can see rajput kind of in appearance rajput in thinking though he's from uh, varanasi he's a personal friend of mine and uh, a professor a man who's a phd who can think through a problem the complex corridors of defense who else better than rajnath singh ji so he's been doing this all the time he chooses ashwini singh i don't know whether many of you know ashwini ashwin singh the railway minister actually belonged to he was an ias officer working with navin patnaik but when he saw how well he dispatched of a series of very complex rural engagements in gujarat when he was the cm this ias officer then went away and he was navin patnaik's blue eyed boy in orissa he saw him and said i want somebody like that to run my railways he made a request to patnaik ji who was at that point of time not even aligned with the bjp and said if you don't mind can i have this guy and he was brought in there and promoted and made a technocrat like him was made the railways minister i can't think of anybody better the way he handled that railways accident using a charpoy and lying down by the side of those uh, those derailed carriages until justice was done to all concerned this is the new india where people are chosen for their inherent worth by a sense of delegation a sense of delegation that modi ji can relate to and the tirukural that he can relate to from 2200 years ago this is this is so truly remarkable that you are giving insight to people about how prime minister modi has been choosing people and one of the qualities of leadership we always talk about is you are a good leader only when you are surrounded by equally good leaders this is the this is the dictum we follow so it is the incumbent upon the leader to develop leadership around him because delegation will not succeed if those people do not have the authority to lead what they have been assigned to do that's what is critical but i want to come back to some interesting thing is the contemporary world you know i will i will share with you because i interact with americans and they asked me a very simple question is that what is it this ram thing that you in indians are going crazy about so when he said something like that of course is an inquiry i'm not offended by that i said is it is akin to if you were to know jesus was returning how would you feel oh is it as big as that i said no it is bigger than that for us whatever jesus is to you i am not concerned about it you do whatever it is for me ram is bigger than anybody else the question here is and i also mentioned to him coming back to thiruji's ideas about the values and i said to him that for us ram epitomizes as a maryada purushottam we treat him as higher than average joe i i told him average joe is you know, higher than average <laughs> joe you know just like you talk to michael <laughs> jordan as the greatest basketball player he is not an average joe so what ram did was he epitomized values and lived through them through suffering trial and tribulations of truth trust respect honor you know honesty you know character he lived those values that's why 
Ram Rajya is once in a lifetime event because we people are very imperfect. Now I want to bring out to you this particular idea and I want to hear from you is that how come the values that Modi ji espoused, what happened in this election? Every forecaster went wrong. Everybody. Everybody who said itna guarantee seat, itna ye, idhar ye, sab, sab kuch fail ho gaya. So were those, what happened to those exit geniuses who conducted those exit polls? You and I were into the scenario of analyzing the pulse at that given moment. We are not experts in that domain. So what went wrong? Was that managed? Was that created? Because what I do know is that the toolkit operators were out there to destroy Modi, come hell or high water. And I had always said that for me, my critical play is put your hand on the trophy by getting 272 plus. That's it. I don't care for 400. Big win doesn't matter. Well, it gives a greater satisfaction. But I'm interested in my opponent doesn't have the hand on the trophy. Prime Minister Modi has succeeded and people are calling him failures. I am asking you, what happened in Tamil Nadu? What is this Stalin? You said something very remarkable, which I didn't know. That Thiru's, you know, Vibhuti from his forehead went away. Vibhuti the, talking about Vibhuti. Yes. That's right. Vibhuti from his forehead <laughs> went away. Though his vastra became white. His sacred thread went away. How did that happen in Tamil Nadu? And why people like Stalin are so vicious and there are no values? What happened there? So I feel uh, it's, it's a very good question you asked. And I felt like, ouch, when you said that. It hurt. Because, yes, to be honest, I, I on the show with you, yes. I anticipated a one to four, including including the partners, one to five. I thought even four or five would give a little boost to the BJP. But unfortunately, we fell absolutely flat on our faces. The reasons we put the GR manifold. Firstly, this, you know, Pichli Pachasal Ka Zeher, Utna Zeher, Sapko Dimak Mai Dal Diya, you know, so much of poison in Jackson. Oh my gosh, this the Hindi guys are out to get you. And you know, equating them to the Kiljis and to the Golconda guys who came down. You have nothing to do. The BJP has nothing to do. If, if anything, they're directly, diametrically across. But they say any northern person is it's almost equated to an invasion. One. Two, the way they went about it this time was they said, don't even vote for me. Just don't vote for that guy. Just don't vote. Or don't vote the lotus in. Just that kind of, I'm giving you so much money. If you can, you vote for me. If you don't like my face, it's cool. Vote for Mr. C. Don't vote for B, who is the lotus. That kind of focused anti-lotus. And the third point I'm going to say, it's very, very, it might jar and it might make the show go controversial. Very poor handling of the BJP task force by the local leadership. Although I think Anamana is a great leader, although I think he's a straight bat, and although I think he was the first one to call the bluff of the DMK and the ADMK, and to draw attention to what Modi ji was doing, he failed in exactly the same thing that Modi ji quoted in SRM. He did not delegate to the right people. Now, I know that for some people, oh my gosh, you can't say things like this. But I'm, I'm genuinely interested in the party and I don't want it to fall flat on its face again. And the leadership, the second rung, third rung, fourth rung leadership, can I just say, this is a public uh, space, it left a lot to be desired. No single person can win. You, you think Modi ji can do all this by himself? He needs Rajnath Singh for defense. He needs Nirmala ji for uh, financing. He needs uh, you know, Jay Shankar ji for external affairs. Imagine if he had just completely unknown, useless guys running that. He would not have made such strides. And basically, I'm very, very sad to say this, from the booth level, the architecture was desperately bad. I say this because I toured five constituencies and campaigned extensively. 
and I saw a very, very well structured architecture of the DMK and the ADMK. This district, you know, in the state, the state is divided into X number of districts, districts divided into counties, counties divided into sub counties, sub counties down, divided into panchayats and villages. And leaders for each of these espousing the ideology. Beautifully done. Done with the precision of the, 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 the Bawalas, the Dabawalas in uh, Mumbai. Bombay. Yeah. Bombay. Exactly like the Dabawalas to precision. And here I found BJP was we were trying to just spout fire and brimstone and say, you know, those guys are corrupt. Let's get them out. In many places, when I said, look, they're corrupt, they said, so what? Everyone's corrupt. Tell us something else. And then we were going on and on about this DMK files, you know, he's got this money, he's got this money, spirited away in a college. That, like hope, hope is a good breakfast. Hope doesn't make a good dinner. This makes a great starter. You know, this guy's corrupt. But then you need to finish by saying, I'll give you this, I'll give you this, I'll give you this. And these, these are my people sitting there and talking to you. So the DMK, so each booth in Tamil Nadu had thousand on an average thousand people. They had at least three or four people who knew 50 to 100 people in those four or five streets that the booth covered. It's just nothing but arithmetic. Proper cephalogical, cephalogical, electioneering, planned arithmetic. They were right on the ground and we were right up there. Oh my gosh, they're saying this about them, they're saying that about them. That'll get you views. Working on the booth at the booth level will get you votes. And in a very controversial local uh, state level, uh, interview. I said all these things and, and I said, look, I want them to win. And they said, no, 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 but this will be looked at as heresy. I said, in that case, I want to be a Martin Luther. If they won't, they won't take me. That's fine. It's good. I'll go to whoever takes me. I mean, I won't go to, you know, some, the Zahrwale, but I'll go to, there are other options still because I want the country to be better. I want the country state to support Modiji. I want, yes, I'm a Hindu Dharmic, uh, you know, right winger. And, I, and I'm unashamed about it. Living in a place where that is supposed to be a major aberration in Tamil Nadu, I go out on stage and I say this. I've had death threats from people. You know, from they come from landlines. I can't be bothered about chasing them. But I've not had any support at all from the party to say, okay, you're fighting on stage for Saratan, you're calling all, calling the shots of the bluff of the ADMK, the DMK. The, the deputy CM, the CM, nothing. You think or swim, it's up to you, boss. I'm busy in my own scene. So I think we really need to be more organized as a team. We need to listen to Thiruvalluvar or at least listen to Modi who quotes Thiruvalluvar. If we had simply followed the very couplets that Modiji had done, certainly in Tamil Nadu, I feel five or six, we could have given them a hand and brought them that much closer to that magic number of 272. So yes, I think it takes two hands to clap and two to tango. Mistake, yes, on their side, very vitriolic, virulent, vituperative, and at the same time, virile, campaigning, anti-Modi, anti-North, anti-Hindi. Our side, complacency, mm -hmm. oh, people all know who's corrupt, who's not corrupt, they'll get us in. You know, this is a very important feedback, you know, as we are, you know, we work it very seriously in various turnaround strategies. And what we do tell people that the end of a problem is the beginning of a new problem, right? Beautiful. And, you know, you always learn from what happened. And I personally draw a lot of lessons from sports. You get beaten, you get beaten, you go back to the drawing room, go back to the training room. And you analyze what we did that didn't work. Right or wrong is not even the question here. What we did worked, what we did that didn't work. So what do we Absolutely. do now? What do we do now? That's the whole, whole game here. So this is what is important for BJP to know. That's why I always solicit feedback. A feedback, not the kind of, you know, oh, you did a great show. No, I don't want that feedback. I want the feedback where I did wrong where I could have done better. That is a feedback. So coming back to that, uh, again, that element of importance here is that you have definitely stepped up in an arena where people like us are immediately branded as XYZ. So do you think 
Modi ji has learned from Thirukul in his Modi 3.0 that he, he must do and he must not do. And just to paraphrase it, I said in my short yesterday, which must be going up now anytime, is that you cannot ignore your core base and you, you have known by nth time the wisdom that appeasement, pandering and bending backwards to a recalcitrant group doesn't work. That's what my message was in my message that will air in any time now. Is That's the point which is very important that what worked, what didn't. So what do you think? And he had said that in 3.0, he will do a lot of things. Do you think he's hampered? And do you think that this breed of Congress people will continue to be nuisance, which I am sure they will? What must be done? <clears throat> Beautiful. Because in the answers to your question lie the answers to a number of things that are going to happen in the next five years. And like you rightly said, it is also my belief that Modiji is going to get one last chance to set things right and to accept that this minority appeasement is not going to win us votes. It's only going to get them more, you know, more benefits without, so you get, you give benefits and you don't get votes in return. Well, leave out votes, you don't even get loyalty in return. One, two, and I, I believe and I hope Modiji gets to hear it. The group that voted against the BJP were predominantly the OBC. And that is tragic because on several occasions, until a few years ago, Mr. Modiji has said, no, no, we must look after the OBCs and the EWS in the OBCs and bring them up. Somewhere along the line, in a haste to look after the already entitled few, namely the bottom of the pyramid and those outside the pyramid, the minorities and the, the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes for whom multiple schemes and multiple programs were organized, the OBC was lost out. I just want to remind the advisors to Mr. Modi that today in India, as in 2019 and as in 2014, the bulk of the voters are the OBC. Have the OBC with you and you have India with you. On the other hand, you ignored the OBC. When I went around, I checked out what happened in Varanasi, Ayodhya, many of those places. It was the OBC was stranded in between. Certainly in Tamil Nadu, the OBC felt completely left behind. On one side, pandering to minority, one side, pandering to the a so-called lower end, the scheduled group, and then we're left completely in the lurch. I want to say that even in the regional parties today, if the OBC can be pulled out from the regional parties in Tamil Nadu, we will win. It is, for example, the Belalas, you know, not me bolte kaist, na? Ye kaist wale. We are the largest group, one of the largest groups in Tamil Nadu and forming the backbone, the very spinal column of DMK and ADMK. Agar ye dono, do parties ke saath, agar sakte, dono parties girega. But what did you do? You just ignored them completely. And actually enacted a law bringing in uh, one of the, uh, the people in the scheduled caste belonging to Mr. Murugan. And we lost hundreds of thousands of votes, Mr. Modi, if you're listening. I can come and tell you this in person. Hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of votes in Tamil Nadu were lost to the BJP because one small group belonging to Mr. Murugan, ex, uh, the head of uh, the ex head of the state. I mean, I have nothing against him, but his group was elevated to OBC status by giving them, you know, like Acharya, like that they were given a Velala or Kai status, whereas they're not really Velalas. And this whole OBC group went against the BJP and hacked them to bits. They actually went from home to home campaigning against the BJP because they felt they turned against them. Right. You helped Mr. Morgan. So did Mr. Morgan win? No, he got slaughtered too. Right. Did you win in other places where Mr. Morgan's group were larger in number? No, you got slaughtered there too. Where did those votes go? 
they went with the DMK. So you antagonized the OBC to pander to another group that went en masse, en masse with the DMK. I'm sorry to discuss community and caste, but read Shashi Tharoor, Midnight to Millennium. I think it's page 237 or something, in which he says, in every other democracy, people go there to cast their vote. Only in India, they go to vote their caste. We cannot but be aware of communities in India. It may take 100 or 200 years for the real Vasudeva Kurumbakam to come in when we all say we have no caste. Otherwise, most of us believe that a community is an extension of the family. That's all. It's like my brother's son has needs a job, I'll get him. Well, his cousin or oh, cousin thrice removed, cousin 10 times removed. This is the community bus. I'm not talking about negative hatred, community hatred or caste hatred. That is very bad and evil. But simply helping your own is, is the basis of life. And this huge community, nearly 20%, was just treated like rubbish. And I honestly believe, I hope this feedback goes to two people. I hope it goes to Mr. Anamalai and I hope it goes to Mr. Modi. I, we actually, this whole community, the leaders went and met Mr. Anamalai and we requested him to, and Mr. Arvind Menon, who was head of Tamil Nadu, and we also met Mr. Rajnath Singh Ji. The, the papers went up to number one and number two, too, to say, look, this 20% will support you. Just give some of our leaders a chance. But no, not even one of those people was entertained. And the whole community went against them. Indeed, whom do you all know as a Minister of State, Vibhudiji, from the South? Apart from Mr. Murugan, it's Mr. Pon Radha Krishnan, senior most leader. He stands in Kanyakumari, which is the bastion of the BJP. Where you can that's where Mr. Modiji went to do his meditation. That's where Tiruvalluvar Rock is situated. And that is where it is in that one of those districts that one of our female leaders. Thrice MLA, thrice MLA. She quit for Congress whip. She was, I think, a Supreme Court advocate. I think she was assistant solicitor general or something like that. So senior in the Congress, quit everything, came across the BJP. After initially announcing her as a candidate, they knocked her off and put in Pond Radha Krishnan. Another insult to the same community. And people went in gangs to make sure that Mr. Pond Radha Krishnan would lose and lose. He did. But what I can't understand is I'm a surgeon, an entrepreneur, uh, a businessman running around. I'm an author. I'm, but I'm also a politician. These guys are full-time politicians. They should have been aware of this community dynamics. We were all thirsting to give at least those four or five or six seats. It is just... There's a, I can finish up with one Tirukur. Yes. Says, yes. It is... It is a message to kings saying it is when you are rejoicing in victory that you are most vulnerable to defeat and in the artha shastra kautilya also says the best time to attack i've been reading this best time to attack an enemy is when he's just back after a victory because they'll be on you know, wine and women and they'll be relaxed. Hit him then. Just as the best time to punch a man is when he's just punched you and he's taking his fist back, he can't punch you. That's when you must punch in martial arts. Yeah. That's what they should have learned. They should have learned that. And, and there's one Tirukural that says, when you're just drunk, with, oh, we have done it, we have done this, we've done this, that's when you lose. And that's what happened. I felt that the BJP in Tamil Nadu was extremely complacent. And although I'm also an admirer of Mr. Anamale and a good friend of his and like a brother to him, it behoves a good partner and friend and a member of the party to say, well, to point out mistakes, you know? Yes. And I think this is what they did not have in BJP. Tirukural says, a king who doesn't have people who stop him and point out his mistakes will, although he has no enemies, be sure to be defeated by his own work. And that's what happened in BJP. You said it correctly, and we we do practice this in our corporate uh, education and corporate right. turnaround strategies. 
because always rely upon the feedback. There is only one caveat here. Your feedback is poignant. You know, I, and I hope people in this world will watch and convey the message when it needs to go. But it's important. There was no bitterness in it. You gave the feedback as it came. When the feedback becomes negative is that when you begin to ridicule. Yeah. And you're absolutely correct is that if I don't give you the feedback and if you don't give me the feedback, what good is our friendship? You know, and I, I relate it with the business aspect that somebody told me, oh, I don't do friends business with friends. So I said, who do you do business with? Enemies? Enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to rely upon friends and cultivate this. Listen, it's a fascinating conversation we have had today. Uh, you know, Thirukul's wisdom is, is, is absolutely fantastic. You know, he's covered entire gamut of life. You know, it is Sanatan. That's why I realized that Stalin hates Sanatan because he gets exposed here. I have been to Tamil Nadu many times. When I was an RBI officer in Bangalore, I used to come to oh, the nice. RBI staff college for training on Mount Road, you know. Uh, you know oh, so nice. come there, you know, so I've been to, been to all the Mahabalipuram and other places. I have yeah. gone to Snake Park. I've seen Tamil Nadu, Chennai very well, all right. Oh. I have an affinity there. I have an affinity because that was my first big job to be you know, to a pride of place to be an RBI officer. But I also want to tell, I say this on my show and I'll repeat it here. To all the Tamilians who hate Hindi guys, look, you have the right to be unhappy with the Hindi guys because they try to impose Hindi on you. And remember that it was during the Congress party rule. The UP Wallas and the Bihari, Biharis of my areas who thought that they were running the country. Because the Bihar UP numbers made them superpower. And who was there to challenge Nehru, right? There was nobody to challenge Nehru Gandhi family, right? So they were the ones who played the game on you. I didn't. Number two, you know, you might have this unhappiness with the Hindi guys, Hindi speaking guys, but the language has done you no harm. <laughs> Learn the language. I always tell my Southern India friends that... And I always tell my Northern India friends, learn one language other than your own, particularly the Hindi speaking guys. People know, who know me, they know me. They, they know this. I have always implored upon every Hindi speaking guy to learn one language other than his own. Whether it's Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, Assamese, you know, Marathi, learn one language other than your own. And I implore upon Southern Indian people Learn Hindi language. It has done nothing to you. It's just like learning like French or French or German. Learn Hindi. Why not? After all, we are just the same. Thirukul, Sanatan, we are all the same. Doctor, always a pleasure. So what a what a wonderful connect I have with you, and I'm honored by that. And the things Thank that you me. do are truly remarkable. Things that you do are truly remarkable. Next visit to India. I will come to Chennai to meet you. That's my promise. Public. Wherever you are, I shall come and pick you up in India, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> With these yeah, words, I say to the viewers, Satyame Vijayate, please like, subscribe, and support our channel. Satya ko jitne ke liye, you have to stand up for it and fight for it. Thank you.